The true tragedy of Passione is the reason behind the gang involvement in the story, which casts a light on these extreme consequences. Passione is more than just a criminal organization, it symbolizes the intersection of personal despair, societal failure, and moral conflict. Its structure and power provide a framework for discussing the broader issues of human ambition and societal influences on individual choices. Now, the characters in Passione, each with a unique history and motivations, represents different facets of gang life. From Giorno's challenge of aligning his ideals alongside a violent environment, to Narancha's pursuit of belonging in a world that has let him down. These stories explore loyalty, power, and betrayal, reflecting the complex dynamics of what it means to be in a gang. I just hope that I do it well enough on explaining it. The first character we are looking at is Narancha Girga. Narancha's life had been plagued by instability and neglect from an early age. After losing his mother, he faced a cold and neglectful relationship with his father, leading him towards a destructive social circle. His belief that friendship is the one power above all had been hopeful at best, considering how it played out. This period of his life was characterized by a lack of guidance and support, pushing him further into an environment that only aggravated his troubles. Narancha's decision to join Passione was significantly influenced by his interactions with Bruno and Fugo. In them, he found figures who offered him the understanding and support he desperately needed. The idea of returning to a hostile and unloving home environment was unthinkable for Narancha, realistically, making Passione a largely better alternative. Here, he found a sense of friendship, belonging, and purpose, which had been largely absent in his life. Narancha's journey took a turn when he learned about Trish's situation. Seeing Trish targeted by her father, Diavolo resonated deeply with Narancha, drawing parallels with his own experiences of abandonment and betrayal. His empathy for Trish drove his decision to stick with Bruno's group as he saw a part of himself in her struggles. This empathy was not just about shared experiences, it reflected his longing for care, solidarity, and protection, something he found in Passione. So while he might have feared for his life and the future, he prioritized friendship once again. Narancha had plans for a life beyond the gang, you know, dreaming of a future where he could leave the violent world of Passione behind. However, these hopes are tragically cut short by Diavolo, who robs him of the chance to realize these dreams. His tragic death, portrayed by the iconic pose of the pita, symbolizes his role as the child of the group, one who was nurtured and protected by his peers. His death in this iconic pose serves as a sad reminder of the lost innocence and the tragic end that often awaits those ensnared in this gang life. Despite the nurturing and protection he received, it was not enough to save him from the brutal reality of the world that he was truly entangled in. Risotto Nero, while not a part of Bruno's group, is still under the organization of Passione. His descent into the underworld is rooted in a deeply personal tragedy, because at the age of 14, he experienced a life-altering event when a drunk driver had killed his cousin. Now, despite the severity of the crime, the driver received what Risotto saw as a lenient punishment because it was only four years in prison. This incident left an enormous impact on Risotto, stirring within him these feelings of injustice and a thirst for retribution. His pursuit of personal justice led him to assassinate the driver at 18, making his irreversible entry into the underworld. This action wasn't born of necessity or longing for belonging, but it was a direct response to a perceived failure of the justice system. This initial act of vengeance set Risotto on a path deeply intertwined with the criminal underworld. His capabilities and strong stand Metallica escalated him to a prominent position within Passione into La Squadra Esecuzioni, but this all came with a cost. Seeking even further vengeance against Diavolo now, Risotto's life, I'd say, completely spiraled out of control. 
Risotto had to endure the agony of watching his team members fall one after another. Though misguided in their initial pursuit of Trish, uh, it was overshadowed by their justified hunt for Diavolo. This pursuit eventually shared by Bruno's group highlights a largely tragic irony because unknown to each other, both factions were aligned in their ultimate goal against the boss. Had they been aware of the full extent of Diablo's deception and true nature of the threat that he truly was, their stories might have linked, possibly even working alongside each other. Risotto's narrative within Passione is a stark example of how a single incident of injustice can set off a chain of events leading to a life of violence and tragedy. His story reflects on the consequences of decisions made in grief and anger and the missed opportunities for redemption that can arise from misunderstandings and manipulations within this criminal underworld. Panacotta Fugo's path to Passione was not one of ambition or desire, but rather a consequence of his life spiraling out of control. A child prodigy faced with immense expectations, Fugo's life took a drastic turn following an incident of abuse by a superior and his subsequent and completely justified violent reaction. His expulsion from school represented more than just a disciplinary action, it was the collapse of the course that he was expected to follow, a path of conventional success and achievement. Left with limited options and grappling with the trauma and anger from his past, Fugo found himself drawn to Passione through Bruno's help. His decision to join the gang was not driven by a deep-seated aspiration, but as a response to his altered circumstances. In Passione, he found a place where his intelligence and skills were valued, albeit in a context far removed from his initial life trajectory. Fugo's journey within the gang reached a critical point when Bruno's group decided to defect and oppose Diavolo. Confronted with the reality of escalating violence and the potential consequences and, you know, potentially meeting his own fate, Fugo chose not to follow. Now, I think this decision was rooted in a desire to avoid further turmoil and possibly a longing to return to normality as this truly wasn't even the life that he had wanted to play out. However, this choice meant distancing himself from the companions who had become his new family, leading to a profound sense of loss and isolation. It was a choice that highlighted his internal conflict and immense pressure he felt to protect himself from further trauma. However, this decision came at a significant cost. The loss of the close relationships he had formed within the group, leaving him isolated in a world that had already taken so much from him. Initially, Abakio embarked on his career as a police officer with ideals and aspirations to uphold justice. His earlier days in the force were filled with a genuine desire to make a positive difference. However, this hopeful beginning was ruined by the harsh realities of lawlessness within the police force itself. Over time, Abahio succumbed to the corruption he had once opposed, a change driven by a combination of external pressures and a gradual erosion of his initial ideals. This pivotal moment in Abakio's descent came when his actions, influenced by his corrupt practices, led to the death of a fellow officer. This tragedy was a profound wake-up call to Abakio, marking the complete collapse of his entire moral framework and his belief in the system he had once served. It was once a moment that filled him with guilt and a deep sense of failure. And following this tragic incident, Abakio found himself lost, sunken in guilt and disillusionment. His path eventually led him to Bruno, like the others, and Passione. Now, under Bruno's guidance, Abakio had found a chance for redemption. With Bruno's leadership, characterized by a strong moral code and a strong sense of justice, this provided Abakio with a new purpose. In Passione, he sought to atone for his past mistakes, embracing the opportunity to do something meaningful, albeit within the confines of a criminal organization. Abakio's last mission to obtain the face of Diavolo symbolizes his ultimate attempt to confront the truth 
and achieve justice, the very ideals that he had lost along the way. He loses his life. So in his last scene, Abakio experiences an encounter that brings his inner turmoil to the surface. While at a restaurant, he stumbles upon a man under the table and the scene is almost surreal to him. A policeman gathering glass shards, a metaphor for Abakio piecing together the fragments of his broken ideals. This officer's dedication to uncovering the truth, despite the futility of the outcome, mirrors the integrity Abakio once possessed as a policeman. Now, the conversation with the officer leads Abakio to confront the guilt he's been carrying since the incident that led to his fellow officer's death. And the true identity of the policeman as Abakio's deceased former partner is his whole revelation. It brings Abakio's journey full circle, forcing him to face the consequences of his actions directly, but more so, he gives this emotional response, a mix of grief, regret, and a painful acknowledgement of his lost integrity, this being a cathartic release of the burdens that he has carried. But it's not the meeting that gives him this cathartic release, it's the reassurance from his partner that Abakio has never truly lost sight of his original values, because despite his fall, he took the path of redemption and rekindled all that once made him who he truly was. His story is a testament to the profound impact of our choices and the possibility of redemption, even in the face of these impossible odds against us. And now that we covered a lot of specific characters about Passione itself, now, a fundamental aspect of the tragedy in Passione is rooted in economic desperation, because many characters turn to the gang as a means of survival, driven by poverty or a lack of viable opportunities in their regular lives. This necessity pushes them into a life of crime, seeing it as the only path to financial stability and an escape from poverty. Now, beyond economic needs, the pursuit of power and status is also a compelling factor in Passione because characters are drawn to the gang for the influence and respect that comes with a higher rank within the criminal hierarchy and the world itself. This pursuit often stems from a deep-seated desire to overcome feelings of powerlessness or insignificance, driving them into a relentless quest for dominance and recognition within the gang structure. A prevalent theme in the narrative of the gang is the character's search for identity and belonging, often stemming from experiences of neglect and abandonment. This emotional void drives them towards the gang seeking a place where they feel accepted and understood. Now, many members of Passione also having faced rejection and isolation in their early lives find in the gang an alternative family. This need for belonging and acceptance is a powerful motivator, sometimes even surpassing the allure of power and wealth. It speaks to the basic need of human connection and recognition. In examples with that, you have characters like Narancha and Fugo to an extent, ultimately illustrating this theme. And Narancha's gravitation towards Passione was fueled by the lack of familial warmth and acceptance, finding it in Bruno and Fugo figures who provided the support and understanding that he craved. And similarly, Fugo, after being alienated from his traditional path due to violent reaction to uh, his abuse, finds a sense of belonging in Bruno's group that he lacks elsewhere. And the gang provides a collective identity that fills the void left by personal traumas and societal failures. However, this often comes at a cost of potential individual identity in the world, as members find themselves conforming to the gang's ethos and demands, sometimes losing sight of their own personal values and aspirations in the process. And as for the harsh realities of gang life, Passione doesn't shy away from depicting these brutal realities of this life, including the constant presence of death and violence. These elements are not just peripheral dangers, they're central to the daily experiences of these gang members. And this continuous exposure to violence and the threat of death takes a significant psychological toll on the characters. Symptoms akin to PTSD are evident in Several members of Passione manifesting in anxiety, paranoia, flashbacks, all that. This is a reflection 
of the mental health issues that often plague individuals involved in violent, high-stress environments. And the narrative also explores the cycle of violence perpetuating within Passione. Actions of violence often beget further violence, trapping the characters in a continuous struggle for survival and potentially dominance, depending on the characters. This cycle is not only a physical threat, but also an emotional and psychological one, as it perpetuates the trauma and stress that the characters have to endure. I think there are two key characters to show everything that this story truly is, starting with Bruno. Now, Bruno Bucciarti's life is uh, a life woven with tragedy and resilience. His childhood was affected by the pain of his parents' separation and near-fatal attack on his father by these gangsters. This traumatic experience laid the foundation for his eventual entry into Passione, and it wasn't, again, through ambition, but more so necessity that propelled him into the underworld, similarly to Risotto, driven by a desire to protect his father and himself, though. Now, Bruno's initiation into gang life was a matter of survival in a world filled with danger and uncertainty. Passione offered a semblance of security and a means to take back some of control of these circumstances. However, this decision came with its own moral conflicts and challenges. So as Bruno rose through the ranks of Passione, his quest for power was marked differently from his peers. His leadership wasn't about dominance or narcissism, but instead about protecting those under his care and maintaining a sense of justice within the murky waters of the gang's operations. For Bruno, Passione became more than just a criminal organization. It was where he found a sense of identity and belonging. His team wasn't just a group of subordinates, but a family he chose to protect and nurture. This sense of belonging and responsibility towards his team members was a driving force in his actions. And despite his best efforts, Bruno was not immune to the harsh realities of this life. He witnessed the death of his friends and faced the constant threat of violence. Each loss and battle added to the way he carried, a testament to the high cost of life within Passione. And Bruno carried the heavy burden of seeing his friends and team members fall. The deaths of Narancha and Abakio under his leadership were large blows to the team, highlighting the relentless brutality of their world. His desire for Narancha to leave the gang life and pursue education became a tough reminder for the unfulfilled potential and lost dreams of the character. And Bruno played a crucial role in helping Abakio find a sense of purpose in Passione. So Abakio's death was not just a loss of a team member, but a personal tragedy for Bruno who had invested in rebuilding his life. And Bruno's relationship with Giorno was all together by mentorship and support, and he recognized Giorno's potential and ambition by helping him navigate the challenges of the world. This relationship was a huge point to Bruno's ability to help inspire and lead, even in the face of adversity. And finally, for Giorno Giovanna, his life is rooted in more hardship and adversity, because born as the son of Dio, his early years were mainly defined by neglect and abuse for the parents that he did have. The lack of a stable, loving environment and exposure to violence at such a young age had left deep psychological scars for the character, setting the stage for his future path. Giorno's entry into the world of Passione was driven by a blend of necessity and a desire to escape what he originally lived as. His childhood experiences instilled in him a strong will to survive and overcome the challenges that he faced, driving him towards the gang as a means to change his life and the lives of others. Because unlike many in Passione, Giorno's quest for power was not really for personal gain, but to achieve a greater good for them all. His ambition to become a gang star was fueled by a vision to reform Passione from within, to turn it into a force that could do more good than it was originally, and at least take some drugs off the streets for the kids, contrasting sharply with the gang's existing operations. And in Passione, Giorno found not just, you know, a gang, but a group of individuals who became his friends and his allies. This sense of belonging was crucial for the character, who had longed for meaningful connections in a place where he felt understood and valued. A Giorno's journey was largely affected by Exposure to death and violence, experiences that echoed his trauma of his childhood, 
his PTSD particularly triggered in moments of helplessness, like the White Album fight and when Abakio had died. It's indicative of the deep psychological impact of his past, because despite his young age, Giorno had to navigate a world filled with danger and these moral complexities. And like Bruno, Giorno Giovanna's ascent within Passione is a story filled with profound loss. His ambition to transform the organization into a force that he could use for better and then rather than good, while successful, comes at the heartbreaking cost of losing those closest to him. The deaths of Bruno, Narancia, and Abacchio, and losing Fugo are not mere casualties and, you know, unfortunate stuff. They represent the shattering of a newfound family because each loss leaves a void in Giorno's life to the point where we left only Mista, Trish, and Polnareff, serving as a painful reminder of the sacrifices made in pursuit of his ideals. The journey to reform Passione was paved with noble intentions, but the path was also filled with personal tragedies that Giorno had to endure and overcome. These experiences deeply impacted him, molding him into a leader shaped much as by loss than as victory. A journal's rise to the top of Passione embodies the idea of bittersweet success, because on one hand he achieves the goal of gaining power and position to steer Passione, on the other hand the cost of this success is extremely steep. The powerful realization of the sacrifices made weigh against the triumph of reaching his goal finally. Giorno's leadership is not just defined by his ability to enact change and help those, but also by the capacity to carry the memories and legacy of those who fell along the way. The narrative of Passione brings to light a critical and complex issue. The intersection of government inadequacy and the rise of criminal organizations now, often these groups, you know, emerge and thrive in environments where the governments fail to address the needs and protect the interests of its people. This failure creates a vacuum that gangs fill and sometimes evolving into entities that parallel the very governments that they operate under. This dynamic poses a profound dilemma for individuals, especially the youth, like the characters mentioned, who are caught between these two problematic forces. The choices are far from simple for those living in the shadow of such organizations, because aligning with the government can sometimes inadvertently mean supporting the gangs, as seen as Abakio's story, where his efforts as a police officer were undermined by the corruption within the system, and on the other hand, opposing the government does not always equate to taking a stand against injustice, as it may still involve working with or within an alternative power structure that isn't inherently humane. Now amidst these complexities, Passione highlights the importance of fighting for what's right, even in a polarized and challenging environment, because despite their entanglement in the gang's operations, the characters strive to uphold their values and beliefs, often at a great personal cost. This struggle is a testament to the human's resolve to seek justice and truth, even in the most daunting circumstances, which I believe to be the all-encompassing theme of Golden Wind. The story suggests that in a world riddled with corruption, violence, and moral ambiguity, what sustains us at our very core of human values is truth, resolve, and friendship. Because these values become the guiding light for individuals navigating these treacherous paths. The story of Passione is not just about the tragedy of its characters, but also about their unwavering spirit to cling to these ideals in the face of these overwhelming odds. So finally, the tragedy of Passione is more than just a story about a gang. It reflects on the broader societal issues that give rise to such organizations and their impact on individuals and communities. It's a narrative that challenges us to think about the choices that we make, the values we uphold, and the importance for standing up what's right, even when the odds are against us. In a world that often seems doomed, the story reaffirms that truth, resolve, and friendship are all that we need to forge ahead, bring about change, and keep the hope of a better world alive. Godspeed.